Hey everyone, welcome to my first video on YouTube. Uh, this video is uh, an introduction to CMake, which is the first of a series of videos that I plan on making on the topic of CMake. Um, this video will, will give you the bare, bare necessities for actually getting a CMake project up and running. Uh, it's going to be very short and pretty straightforward, there's not much to it. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about how CMake is actually used and what its purpose is, and uh, get a little application compiled and running uh, in the terminal. So without further ado, why don't we just dive right into it and then uh, we can drive into more details as we go along. All right, so um, here's our cmakelist.txt file. Now that is the name of the CMake project file. Um, you would put one of these at the root of your project in most cases. There's, uh, of course, very many different configurations that you could set up. Uh, you know, and you could have multiple of these files scattered throughout your project. But for the sake of this uh, tutorial, let's just assume that you're going to have just one of these at the root of your project, which is going to define how your uh, application will be compiled. So, uh, first thing, uh, you have to do a little bit of CMake configuration uh, in order to tell the CMake application what the minimum required version uh, of CMake you need in order to generate build files from your project. Uh, in this case, we're not doing anything fancy, and uh, I literally took this right out of their, their official tutorial. Uh, so 2.6 is a fairly old version, and that's what we're saying here. Uh, we're setting the name of our project, and then we're telling uh, CMake that we want an executable build called BASIC. So don't confuse the name of the project with the executables. The program name that we compile is actually going to be called BASIC, not CMake intro. This is just the, the, the CMake project name. Uh, so it's going to generate the executable from this, uh, based on this name, and we're including uh, some files that we need compiled and linked into that executable. So in this case, this is a very simple example. We have main.cpp, and uh, CMake will know what to do with that file and how to generate the build file so that it can actually compile it and link it. And we'll get more into more detail there. Uh, for now, I'm just going to show you this uh, source file, just for the sake of, uh, you know, not hiding anything from you. Uh, so it's just, as you can see, just the int main. Um, it's about as basic as a C++ program can get. Uh, we have our IO stream library included, and then we're just using C out to print some text, the obligatory hello world, to the standard output. And that's it, and that's the end of the application. Not much to look at there. Um, now, we want to actually compile that. So we've looked at CMake, we've looked at the source file. Uh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna clean this up real quick. Okay, so now we're in the terminal. Uh, let's actually get this thing built. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a build directory and go into it. Now. Let's issue that CMake command. So what I'm doing here is uh, I'm going into the build directory, as you saw, which is now my current directory, and then I'm running CMake and giving it the path to the parent directory, which is where our CMake files or our CMake list.txt file is. So uh, that's that's all the CMake command really needs at a bare minimum to run. It just needs to know where to find the root of your project uh, or the CMake list.txt that you're uh, using to configure a build and then it will figure out uh, what kind of build file to generate uh, and all this other stuff that you will see in a second. So as you can see it's looking at my system, it's finding that uh, I'm on a Mac obviously and it's using Apple Clang which is just uh, uh, Apple's modified version of the LLVM, LLVM toolchain. Um, and um, yeah, it's just doing a little bit of housekeeping. It's figuring out uh, what's what, uh, some compiler features that it needs to um, integrate into the build files in order to build these particular files that I've specified in my configuration. Uh, there's not much there, so there's not much in, you know, in this configuration. These things get uh, much longer as you start adding dependencies and enabling certain features and whatnot. But because we've just, you know, we've created an executable and we've uh, we've told that execute we've told CMake that we want one file build for that executable which is our main.cvp 
it doesn't have to do much. It just configures it and it will generate a bunch of files. You don't need to worry about these files generally. Uh, these are files that CMake will just use to manage the, uh, the build. Uh, the only thing you might care about there is the fact that it's a make file, which means that we run make to compile it, but we're not gonna actually run make to compile it. So we're gonna make CMake figure out um, that it's make and CMake will run make for us, which is the preferred way of initiating a build with CMake. But the other thing um, that I wanted to point out, uh, beginners often run CMake right here in, in the current directory. And what that ends up doing is it creates all the CMake files right here in the root, uh, which is where our project files are. We don't want that because we want our project files to be our project files and we want uh, those to be in our Git repository. And we don't want our build files to be, you know, checked into our Git repository. And we don't want to just, we don't want to intermingle those, those files. We want our build files to be separate. If we want to clean the project, we can just do, uh, you know, RM, RF, and then just delete the build directory. And boom, now I'm back to square one. I can just regenerate the build if something got screwed up or, uh, oops, the build, see so build, see make, dot, dot, slash, boom. Now, um, or you can just do dot dot. But now we've just regenerated the build and we can do a clean build from scratch. There's easier ways to clean the build. Uh, there's even a Stack Overflow um, chain that discusses that. But I mean, if you ever wanna just clean your build, you delete the build directory. Um, that becomes problematic if you pass some uh, properties and arguments to CMake and you generate uh, your build files with some uh, specific arguments rather than just doing CMake dot dot, but uh, we don't need to worry about that just yet. So uh, let's build it. Build, build. Okay, so we're running CMake. We're giving it dash dash build, which is the directive telling CMake to build. And then we're telling it the build path. So essentially it's gonna be our build directory uh, relative to our current directory. Uh, so we hit enter and that's it. So you'll see nothing was put in here and we told it to build what's inside this build directory that you see there on screen. When we go in there, you'll see that it actually compiled our uh, basic executable there. And if you run that, we get hello world, which is exactly what we uh, wanted it to do. We, uh, you can actually go inside CMake files and browse around in there and see that it's got some uh, intermediate files like object files and stuff like that. I'm not gonna waste time looking at that right now. We may drive into it or dive into it a little bit uh, further down in the series, but at this stage, all you have to know is how to build, which we just uh, demonstrated, and that's it. The reason, by the way, that I'm doing dash dash build instead of running make is because I'd like to. S the, the purpose of CMake is to allow you to to do things in a in the most abstract way possible. So you're not. Generally, you want to define your your uh, build configuration and with as little platform specific details as possible. So I want to be able to take this, you know, this project definition and uh, essentially run CMake and configure a build on Linux or on Windows or on OpenBSD or FreeBSD or whatever. And I wanted to just run through this configuration, find my dependencies, if any, in this case, we don't have any and to just generate the build file so that I can compile and run my application as simple as possible. So that means you're, you're trying as hard as you can, and sometimes it's inescapable, but you know you can do some conditional things. Uh, you're trying as hard as you can to not specify anything platform specific in your configuration. You're, you don't wanna specify anything Visual Studio re re related in your configuration, unless you really have to or Xcode or whatever. We're, we're trying to keep things as CMake friendly as possible. And when we have to step out of that box, we have to, but we wanna make sure we don't, uh, we don't jeopardize other platforms in favor of say, you know, if I have something Mac specific here, I, don't, I wanna make sure I don't jeopardize my Linux build because I have my Mac specific stuff here. Now I'm kind of blabbing on and on here, but all I'm, the, the reason why I'm stating this is that if I, uh, even with my build script, like if I was to make a script to build this stuff, I, I don't necessarily want to uh, go in and run make myself. I want CMake to go in there, figure out its make and run make for me. So that's it. I'm just trying to stress that 
uh, by specifying as little platform or build specific or build system specific details as possible, uh, you're you're working in a more abstract way, which just means that uh, you know you can reuse more of your commands and scripts and whatnot on various platforms without worrying about what build system or what uh, build tool chain or whatever you have configured. That's it. So that's all there really is to it. Um, this that that was a very brief intro. Um, I hope it was clear. If you have any questions, please you know leave your questions in the comments section below. Uh, I'll you know I'll try to respond as quickly as possible. Uh, if you have any suggestions on how I can improve my videos going forward, that would be much much appreciated. If something you know didn't look right, if the video quality wasn't you know perfect or whatever, uh, you know this is my first video. I really hope to to get some feedback. Hopefully, it's constructive feedback, um, not just some you know bullshit uh, ins insults or whatever. But uh, you know, if there is an actual issue, please you know let me know, and I'll try and address it in future videos. I I really hope to hear from you, and if you like this and you're looking forward to more of it, please subscribe. Thank you very much.